So it was just me and his lerp standing face to face, well, face to belly, I guess, because he was kind of large. I hoped Wani was okay, that had been a pretty pr big throw. Anyway, the dragon had stopped the slurp in his track, standing between us. She was breathing in. I thought that was the end of me. Never thought I'd be killed by a dragon's fire breath. But... This is Nidak, my adventure. Written down in a better way than I can tell it. Chapter 9 Clichés Shank swallow up and go our guts! Nidak blurted out, getting a disapproving look from Whiny while he took a step closer to her. As if he never curses, she thought. Those swear words were among her favorites, although she had no idea what they meant. She knew they were regarded as very foul here, and that was enough. While still appreciating the other realm's multitude of curses, her attention went back to the raging slurp. He was ready to pounce on them. A cascade of pink blood flowed freely from his nose cavity. The search warrant said to bring you in life, princess. There it was again, the word and the deep scorn while saying it. But it said not about how life, a bit life, will do. A strange sound emitted from his mouth. The face wide open hole showing a much larger amount of pink blood on the purple gums than before. Was he choking? Or perhaps trying to bring up a hairball? She'd seen Kitty act like that. Both Nidak and Pagewin stared at him. Then she realized. Oh! She paused, making sure. You're laughing? That's the worst laugh I've ever heard. Ugh. She made an exaggerated shiver sound, her body acting it out as well. The motion blackened the corners of her side, and she wobbled, as if being pushed and tugged by gentle ocean waves. A quick glance at Whiny assured her he hadn't seen, fixed as he was on the slurp. The slurp closed his mouth and scowled. I, I trained a lot. Time for that. My teach set me to be the best of her suits. Nada couldn't stop herself from snorting and regretting to snort. They trained to laugh? The amusement was dialed back by the pain the snort caused. She cursed at herself. Annoyed for being stupid enough to forget about current pain-causing habits. Her voice sounded thin and forced in her own ears. Perhaps it would serve you better to practice making clothes, because that... She pointed vaguely in the direction of his bare sex. Is the worst thing I've ever seen. She heard Whiny make a noise but couldn't be certain if it was a stifled laugh or an incredulous gasp. A growl rose into his lerp's throat. Neda rolled her eyes at all of the cliché things surrounding this creature. It almost felt as if he'd taken his whole attitude and manner from human TV shows and movies. The awareness of an idea formed in her head in a fraction of a second. The slurp harumphed again. <clears throat> I need not hide my pride. Why would I not show I top most? The creature's face managed to convey sincere confusion at that. Nidek's mind spun, and not only from her concussion. 
but he wasn't sure what to think of this slurp. Slurps hadn't been among the creatures she'd been taught about, although slurps had. They seemed to have similarities, but differences too, like a difference in intelligence. And if what this one just said was right, they had a natural hierarchy based on what? Their sex? The number of balls? Or something else? Nadek's curiosity rose. She wanted to find out more. The Zlurp hadn't stopped talking, saying all kinds of stereotypical things. Something about not having to spare Winnie's life, the consequences of her death being worth the pleasure of killing her. But she hadn't been paying attention anymore. Winnie took a few steps away from the Zlurp, but he still stood closer to him than she was. She looked toward him. He was about to hit the creature with, eh, whatever he was about to do. Squares, triangles, circles, trapezia, parallelograms. Who knew? Don't kill him, she almost yelled. She paused. I mean, not that you've managed it before when you actually wanted to. She trailed off, grinning at him. Just unconscious, please. I have questions. We'll just make sure to tie him up now. She was willing to let him handle this, as she felt herself grow weaker by the moment. If she didn't know better, she'd think that someone was poking her brain with their finger. Seeing no reason to show that, she grabbed her halberd from her back anyway, lengthening the shaft to lean on it. Hardly a worthy battle stance, but she couldn't care about that now. Even though the halberd's weight was nothing like what it should be, she'd long ago stopped wondering about the abnormalities surrounding the weapon. Trying to hold it up now would only result in embarrassment. The slurp kept on talking. She vaguely heard him say, If you want me, come here and get me. Her attention was fixed on her travel companion, though, the man who had gotten her in all this trouble. Winnie merely stared at her, confused, uncertain. She didn't understand why he wasn't doing anything. He stood there, looking like an idiot. A gorgeous, naked idiot. He somewhat looked like a young Gerard Butler, yet with the attractiveness of the actor's older years. She wondered why she hadn't noticed that before. She couldn't help but grin wider at him and at the Zlurps' number one villain mistake. Talking while they should be attacking. Whiny shook his head slightly, and then a smile blossomed on his nearly perfect face, lopsided in perfect imitation of Gerard. Those doubles surely looked nice on him. The Zlurp picked him up and tossed him several meters further. Rotting blurbs! Neda cursed herself for falling into the classic romantic scene while fighting mistake. What was going on here with all the tropes? The purple creature let out that sound again, the one that was supposed to be laughter, and ran towards her, going faster than she'd give him credit for. He almost got close enough to tower over her when the dragon came to a stop between them. Her long neck forced the slurp to a halt. Step aside, Blacky. I can do this. I would like to hear the princess's screams of pain. I'll keep her alive enough to give her to them, as the one said. Bird. There wasn't any word how long she 
should still be able to stay alive after drop off. The black beast head only a bit higher than the slurps, large but not quite as enormous as she expected a dragon to be, looked from Nedek to the slurp to Kitty, utter black head swiveling in an almost hypnotic way, the fierce eyes taking everything in. She repeated that three times before breathing in, her chest puffing up. Fire! I'm going to be scorched by fire! Nedek had never thought that was the way her life would end. She thought about running away, but all she could do was stumble backwards, tripping over her own panicking feet. Blackie's chest stopped expanding. She aimed her head at Nedek, winked, turned towards the slurp, and let out the most massive burp Nedek had ever heard. The slurp fell unconscious. You have been listening to Nedek, Chapter 9, Clichés, narrated by myself, Nedek, adventured by and lived through by Nedek, written in a better way than I can tell it, by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet, we've got bloopers coming up. Before we get to those... We just want to say that if you head over to astridjeff.com, you can find transcripts and full chapters of this podcast. Even more, you can find the unedited draft of Nadek at least up to 15 chapters further than a podcast goes. So, if you're keen to know how the story continues, you have the option to go and read. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nedek and Kitty. If you like this show and would like to support it, a good way to do that is share it around to everyone you know. An even better way is to rate and review it on iTunes or whichever podcatcher you use. Don't forget to follow the show or subscribe for free. Her attention went back to the raging, to the raging, both Pned, Pnedek, <laughs> yeah, it almost felt as if he'd taken his whole attitude. The fuck was that? She'd been thought about, she'd been taught about, pause to drink, pause to drink. Wine took a few steps away from the zillurp but he still stood closer to it. Wait, that's not right. That's not right. What are you doing? Right. Why needs to... Why needs? There's only one. She repeated that three times before breathing. Oh, shit. Why need took a few steps away from the slurp. Slurp? Only one, damn it. <sighs> Wani took a few steps away from the slurp, but he still stood closer to, mm-hmm, to him than she was. Damn it. She'd long ago stopped wondering about the abnormali- ab- abnormalities? abnormalities? Or the abnormalities surrounding the weapon surrounding the weapon trying to hold it up oh let's just do that again she vaguely heard him say if you want me <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> i'll keep her alive now to get her oh bloody hell that's not healthy Oh, my throat. Yeah. The black beast had only a heart. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm putting that in the bloopers.
That's not even easy. 